very good afternoon dear friends at the outside really thank the organizer who has given me this opportunity to interact with you people i will discuss in panel from bench to bed side we discuss about the phase 1 phase 2 phase 3 trial what we are doing in our clinical practice at our center rather than discussing a hypothetical discussion i want that everybody will discuss their own practical problems once i am discussing about the nkrt or mat once we have diagnosed in lung cancer patients so case before starting case i just want to refresh your mind that what is presented by our presenter just see mat exon 14 mutation skip seen only in 3% of non sponsor lung cancer 15% are having a co occurring with mat amplifications common histopathology seen sir adenocarcinoma sarcomatoid ischemic adenocarcinoma high pdl1 tmb is low means if you see the different abstract i'm just having a concentration points of mat basically now and clinical presentation is at the age of 70 years smoker also in never smoker females are dominating and poor survival and now see the mat amplification less than 1% of non sponsor lung cancer if you see any data it's less than 1% and as one of the speaker clearly mentioned about that 10% of the egfr mutation patients are having a resistant mechanism of because of the pat and 15% basically seen in elk positive patient and this is one of the reason of non responding patient with specific targets and common histopathology adenocarcinoma ischemic cell carcinoma and others high pdl1 and low tmb median age is roughly 10 years prior means 60 years of age most of the patients are smoker male and poor survival and just see this mat exon 14 skip mutation associated with worse prognosis we need to do something we have a standard of care we are having a tki but we will discuss what is from bench to bench side and just see that this is an independent prognostic factor that predict worse survival as compared to the other lung cancer patient and kaplan meier curve clearly showing this so i am talking about the second one ntrk neuro neurotropic tyrosine kinase inhibitor genes are oncogenic driver in whole varieties of adult and pediatric short tumor but just see the frequency of ntrk gene fusion in non sponsor lung cancer is estimated 0.1 to maximum 1% if you see 100 patient then one patient could be ntrk gene positive now i will discuss the real world case this i brought from the novati side but this is a real picture and real case presentation of mat and side by side i will discuss with ntrk just a 60 year old asian woman non smoking history presented with a persistent cough left lung mass was found on the x ray chest biopsy with suggestive of adenocarcinoma as everybody talked about mri mri this patient has a mri and patient revealed multiple brain mats abdominal ct shows a adrenal gland mats left side and a asymptomatic bone lesion in the pelvis sacrum 1 cm and this is the classical x ray of this patient shows a dull cp angle and decrease in left lung volume and the ct scan of the chest shows a nodular lesion left lower base approximately 15 is to 15 mm as shown by the red arrow and yellow arrow shows 20 is to 15 mm lesion in the left base so my question is very practical according to your hospital or where you are practicing would this patient be tested for oncogenic driver gene you have a four options yes you have a second option no i should start chemotherapy third no i would like to go for a immuno chemotherapy or combination of that doctor what is your choice at your center in clinical practice um uh, so yes of course this patient should be tested for all the oncogenic drivers uh, that is something that we do most commonly especially in all the metastatic cases i think your mic is not 
functioning. Just check it. Yes. Uh, so, which we should test uh, the oncogenic driver mutations for almost all cases of those who are coding uh, for the metastatic lung cancers. So, in my practice, I would definitely do the mutation. NGS. And so, either NGS or maybe uh, as per the affordability, the fish or uh, other pan uh, mutation testing. But nowadays, we do have NGS being uh, tested by many labs, and uh, some of them also give good discounts. So, we end up doing it commonly, limited NGS. Doc, sir. <coughs> so, thank you, sir. Uh, definitely, I think I uh, concur with her that uh, we should do the mutation analysis for this patient. Uh, if the patient is symptomatic, start on some treatment with chemotherapy and uh, do a broad panel NGS or a limited panel NGS as per the, uh, the requirement. And, uh, you know, so that would be required to be done. Yeah. My question is, she had a brain mat, she's symptomatic. Would you like to wait for two to three weeks? No, we should like to start chemotherapy first. I mean, obviously we send the analysis. That's why I'm saying, pens to bedside, clinical practice. Yeah. So, symptomatic, we should start chemotherapy. If the patient is also apprehensive, we should start chemotherapy, but send it for the analysis. Yes, sure. sir, one of our panelists, Dr. Suha Sagri, has... Oh, yes, yes. So, sir, definitely, if, uh, the, I thought the question is just whether to test or not, but definitely to That's test. why I've given four options but to simultaneously you. also start yes, treating. Because, because you needed two to three yeah. weeks time. So, so whole Turn up time, basically. Yeah, so multiple brain meds. Symptomatic, definitely whole brain radiation therapy will uh, help us and chemotherapy up front because as we know that it takes two, three weeks to, for the NGS to arrive. So definitely chemotherapy up front. But again, here uh, there is a catch. If the patient is uh, not fit for the chemotherapy, then maybe whole brain radiation and two, three weeks is good enough time to wait for the NGS support to come and start it up front as a therapy. Dr. Sab has previously speaker mentioned in the panel discussion that 30% patients are EGFR mutation positive and patient is symptomatic. Would you like to start the gefitinib in such patient and wait for? Yes. Yes? Start empirical gefitinib. Means, so we... means if you see roughly two hours back, somebody was talking about that. Yeah. I'm simply asking about a clinical practice. I'm not saying somebody is wrong or somebody is right. Suppose you are going for NGS or a special test, waiting for two to three weeks, would you like to add something if patient is asymptomatic from the brain site? No, we, I mean, one practice that we do not follow is that to start empirical gestinib. Yes. So we send the uh, NGS panel. So in between, we decide on whether to start some treatment based on the patient's symptoms and uh, also with the discussion with the patient. In case the patient is symptomatic and uh, if we need to start systemic therapy, we start on chemotherapy. Yes. And in this patient, as there are brain meds, we'll probably go for uh, whole brain radiation. And by the time radiation is over and patient is symptomatically better, we'll get the NGS reports. And based on that, we'll plan the systemic treatment. Empirical gestinib, uh, strictly no. Okay. That's what I okay. Chetan, suppose patient is asymptomatic. There is an incidental brain match. And uh, would you like to start the chemotherapy or gefitinib? What is your clinical practice? What you are doing at uh, Pune? Big no. That much is for sure. If the patient's systemic disease is troublesome yes. and patient has a lot of chest-related symptoms, then yes, chemotherapy is often, we begin with chemotherapy. If the patient is asymptomatic and more symptomatic for lung disease, then preference will be given to the lung disease. The lung disease. Doc, sir. So, uh, if the patient is asymptomatic, we would like to wait suppose the patient there is low disease burden patient is asymptomatic the brain mats we mentioned about so, that but asymptomatic one side i so, discussed that symptomatic she said very clearly that she will go for a palliative cranial radiotherapy so with this kind of situation i would like to start with the chemotherapy waiting for the mutation any therapy. choice of chemotherapy in adenocarcinoma usually pamatrex said under pamatrex said but single agent or doublet doublet as doublet. per the patient performance status and this any opinion from the house side any difference of opinion from house? So, number of time, suppose you are practicing in a B-class city where the NGS is not available, you are sending the patient, would you like to go for testing of upfront or you will wait for progression? Suppose he started the chemotherapy because patient is symptomatic, lung point of view. So, these are the three options. Upfront, you will go for a check or 
at the progression or patient will not be tested for oncogenic driver gene suppose patient is poor you feel that he cannot afford the further treatment what your choice means in clinical practice number of time patients are poor they cannot afford then what you will do out of this three patient kehta hai doctor mere paas to paise zyada nahi hai aap ye jo chemotherapy de rahe ho ye de lo main test nahi kara sakta aapko ye problem saath hi bhi hongi so what you are doing that time We are talking about 10 years, 30,000 rupees that. I'm saying a middle class rickshaw puller came, said, "Bola lung cancer hai, doctor. Same disease has come. And I am symptomatic too. You tell me, how will you do my treatment with less than less than less? Practical aspect discuss. Now tell me, what will you do? So, uh, yeah. What do you think these three options are? I am saying practically. So definitely, sir. I think uh, first we'll start chemotherapy for sure for this patient. now where there are various companies which are coming with a limited and just plan yes. they are offering at free of cost yes we sort of send it to them yes and you know wait for some compassionate based access program if patient yes. is positive yes. this is something we try to negotiate if nothing is possible or available then the only choice remains continuation of chemotherapy and looking for the limited panel doing testing for the limited panel now my question is that patient is on pemetrexate carboplatin as doc sub mentioned and has an excellent response what you will do still you will go for a test or you continue as a maintenance therapy or you will wait for progression of disease and then you will go for a test as you mentioned about few companies are helping you will go for a test despite of a good response chetan yeah, there are two things yes 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 Yes, yes, yes. Which, which I want. Yes. I am not going to change my therapy. Yes. That therapy is working for the patient. The patient will continue pen carbo. Sorry. So, if the patient is responding to treatment, I will continue. We've had patients who. done we've started them on the conventional chemotherapy yes. the ngs report came later yes if the patient has shown a great response there is no need to change yes yes we we'll go on his regular course of treatment whatever is the plan either pemetrexate carbo or whatever and then he will continue on maintenance as well the doc sir my question is suppose the coupon is provided by the company would you like to go for a test or uh, you will still wait and continue the treatment because patient is very poor and he is responding very well no i would like to go ahead with the testing as chetan dr chetan mentioned about that for practically if you want to see the real facts yeah. about the disease yes chetan having that information is useful not now yeah. but at a later date yes. we may have some compassion attack yes. there may be a clinical yes. trial opening yes. so it is worthwhile having that yes. information yes. to put it to use or not is a different matter yes any opinion from the audience side yes please Yes, this is another aspect. This is another aspect. Somebody want to comment on that ethical issues regarding the treatment part? Yeah, I I think we should test for uh, all the patients. Yes, mean, it's unethical in the current setting not to test. But unfortunately, there are patients who are not even able to make it to the hospital. Yes, so yes. That issue is there. So I work in a government hospital. So previously, we used to make sure they have at least the EGFR done. Yes. So now that these coupons are much cheaper. So actually it's cheaper than our in house cgfr so yes we are somehow able to get it done for our patients so means house is agree and even the experts are agree that we should go for a complete test despite of a good response even of systemic chemotherapy basically in clinical practice there are two ways there is a indirect way as doc sub mentioned very clearly that egfr and we are doing the egfr and elk if mutation positive then we are waiting for further because the cost as well as the tissue requirement is there and second thing is the direct you can go for ngs complete examination and check the rare mutations also so if your hospital process are recommended this patient to be tested suppose there is a free facilities available at your hospital would you like to for a complete one or if you are selective which one you select egfr elk and pdl or whole blood test or three one or none doctor so 
usually we are doing the broad molecular uh, testing okay. nowadays. If, uh, Means the, I tell you, bigger centers, yes, at my center there is no problem for NGS. There is no problem. But I'm talking about a B-class cities or a small cities See, or... Even, even nowadays there are 12 gene panels. Right? Yes. With PDL one test. Yes. That would be so enough sufficient. Okay. Okay. We are seeing for the target. That will take roughly two to three weeks time. Yes. Turn out time is basically three weeks. Yes. Two weeks around nowadays. But EGFR yes. and ELK you can get within a week period. Yes. But we may miss the other some of the common things. Yes. Yes. Treatment options. Are yes. Available. Yes. So maybe the limited treatment Doc, sir. So I agree. I think we should do the comp uh, complete broad molecular testing for these patients. Tissue is always an issue in lung biopsy. You know, so we, uh, the first decision making is very important. Yes. That that's the most important thing because the repeat biopsy is going to be challenging. So I think you first need to decide based on the condition of the patient how early reports you want. Sometimes you know you may not be able to wait for the NGS report to come, and so you need to do a very specific testing with you know the conventional methods. So that all decisions, uh, so patient-wise, uh, you know, uh, economically wise, as well as the, uh, you know, the situations present, present near the patient, we need to decide upon what we need to do. But for all the patients, the golden rule should be to do a broad molecular test. Yes. Doctor, any difference in opinion? No, so I totally agree. Right. Uh, we do almost uh, all the uh, thing possible and then uh, even the treatment also can be given accordingly because nowadays we do have a lot of newer agents which yes. are... Uh, very uh, cheaper, uh, I mean, the generics are in a cheaper way available, plus we have compassionate uh, basis uh, option, so we can make use of it. And Any opinion from the house side? Yes, please. So I, think I will discuss, I will discuss, I will discuss, I will discuss, means somebody mentioned about that the tissue will exhaust, then what you will do, in, in discussion I have a question. So suppose this patient is having a PDL1 50% positive and bat exon 14 is keep positive. Based on your current practice, would you have correctly diagnosed this patient? Means there are two things are positive. Yes or no? For a broad, if a broad uh, yes. NGS has been done, then yes, it would be picked yes. up anyway. Yes, doctor. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Any comment from the house side? No, means everybody is agreed that yes. So now I am discussing about the treatment options. We discuss abstract, so many abstract means phase one, phase two, what is the guideline says, what is the standard care as per the guidelines. If you have started on chemotherapy, as Dr. Sam mentioned, before the arrival of NGS report, what, you, uh, what would you do? Change to single agent like PDL1 positive or IOL plus chemo, MAT inhibitors, or continue same or new drugs. New drugs. I'm talking about new drugs. The company is providing for trials. What is your choice? So basically, I would like to switch over to the, the MAT inhibitor as of now. Because okay. Of the okay. Meds, uh, exon 14. I will discuss later on. Means first you will decide out of four what is your choice. Then we will discuss about the, the drugs later on. Means suppose patient is on pemetrexate carboplatin. I would like to to over. change. Yes. If PDL one is more than fifty percent positive, or would you like to continue the chemotherapy? Means out of four, what is your choice? So not based upon the PDL one, but hmm. because Matt? we are having the metrexon fourteen skipping mutation. Yes. So we would like to switch over from the chemo to the met inhibitor. Yes. Yes. Chetan. Matt. Anybody is having a difference of opinion? No. And out of this, suppose you want to start the BAT inhibitors. These are the four and new ones also, uh, which we have discussed in abstracts. What is your choice? Capetinib, tipotinib, sevolotinib, crizotinib, Y response rate, chemonib patients, post treated patient, one by one, choice after this patient who received pemetrexate carboplatin. And now MET inhibitors positive. Out of these four and new drugs, what is your choice, doctor? Out of these four, uh, capmatinib is been the choice. Yes. And um, and just mention about the reason why out of these four. So it is well documented. Yes. We use it uh, 
there is a good chance of uh, the, the survival increases. There is a good response. Also, it has some blood-brain barrier. Yes. Uh, effect. I mean, because she had a brain mats. Yeah. So it can travel, and then it can be helpful. Yeah. We'll also go for capmatinib. That is some more data. And also mm -hmm. we have a, in, in our center, we have a phase four trial running. So definitely we'll go for <laughs> Chetan? Ch I just have one patient. Huh. And presently he's on tepotinib. Huh. I don't know. I, I have very little experience with it because it's been only a month. Okay. Any opinion from the house side? Is a bit easy, yes. Yes, peripheral edema. Yes, yes. And these are the basically class. I'm not going in detail of this. Basically, these are the class of uh, matinee beaters. Uh, just for a glance, you can see that we have a three class. Type AB, TKI, crizotinib, cevalotinib, tipotinib, capitinib, FD approved in 20. And basically difference in mechanism of action. Cabozotinib, miratinib, as well as gelicitinib, and third one type is tivatinib. And this is the basically a response. And everybody is agreed that capitinib is basically well tolerable and crossing the blood-brain barrier and responding to the patients. And if you see the efficacy point of view, the I clearly mentioned treatment nave patient and pre-treated patient, there is roughly 10 to 20 percent difference in response rate. If naive, they are responding in the tune of 65 to 67%. If pre-treated patient, then 40 to 50% of the response rate. And this is the median progression free survival again, 12.4 months to 10.8 months. If naive patients and those who are pre-treated, the response is 5.4 to 6.9%. And this is the curve which is clearly showing that there is a difference in pre-treated and naive patients. And this is the tipotinib already discussed in the abstract by one of our presenter. This is the trial which shows a role of this drug in intracranial mats. Now, what are the barriers in your clinical practice? Once you have initial diagnosis, insufficient tumor or low sample, non availability of appropriate test methodology at your center, Long turnaround amount down roughly two to three weeks. Lower awareness about the biomarkers in your clinical practice by the pathologist. Inadequate technical expertise within your hospital or inadequate reimbursement to cover all the relevant biomarkers. Means most of the time, suppose the free coupons are not available. My word is very specific. When free coupons are not available, is any barrier is playing a role in your practice? If free coupons is not available. So definitely inadequate reimbursement to cover. That is the main key barrier that we really face today. Yes. Uh, <coughs> long -term around, turnaround time is also one of the factors yes. we face. Uh, some patients may require a very immediate treatment. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that is one thing which comes in our way. And obviously inadequate reimbursement. Docs, at government hospital. Yeah, and uh, these two factors are there and also insufficient tissue where, when the patient comes uh, with a biopsy already done from outside. So that is also a major problem. Chetan? Multiple factors. Uh, that's why I'm discussing. No, not just one insufficient I'm talking tissue, about the clinical practice long problems. Long time, inadequate uh, expertise. Not many hospitals do it in-house. Inadequate reimbursement. Uh, sometimes the patient comes from outside with a tissue. Some two or three markers done, EGFR, I'll cross has been done. Yes. And uh, patient is symptomatic. So the patient wants treatment. Yes. Patient has come to you for treatment. He says, now, whatever diagnosis I have, he's reluctant for a rebiopsy anyways. More than one issue will play here. Talk, sir. So, absolutely, I agree with sir. But uh, the even the time periods are now changing because of the awareness and all. All these are the things are getting improved over the time period. That is also uh, important. Now, I am discussing about NTRK instead of MAT. If patient is positive for NTKR gene, what is your choice, doctor? Out of these two or the new drugs or something else? 
same patient but he he is she is not positive for mat now she is a nta ntrk fusion genes positive entrectinib is one which we would use and um, again um, based on how much affordability doctor yeah for this patient the first line we will continue chemotherapy the progress we can consider in care again mainly the data is mainly on patients who are already treated with multiple lines okay. and also affordability is definitely an issue so chemo then on progression we'll explore the option of uh, ntrk chetan same. same any differences in opinion means everybody prefer to go for a chemotherapy and then so in what Senior, will you evaluate the option of liquid biopsy for MAT14 skip mutation? As doctor mentioned, suppose progression of disease despite of chemo, fluid fusion come out or some fluid. Uh, what is your opinion regarding the 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 liquid biopsy in your clinical practice? In how many patients you are advising if tissue is not available? So the uh, gold standard is going to be always a tissue biopsy. Yes. Uh, you know, sometimes we come ac across the situations where uh, the patient is unwilling for a, a repeat biopsy or getting a biopsy is difficult or risky. In that situation, we prefer doing a liquid biopsy because uh, the concurrence of liquid biopsy in lung cancer, uh, you know, has been better as compared to the tissue biopsy also. But still, I think, uh, you know, across all the, uh, you know, uh, across all of us, I think, what we, what we think is that the gold, uh, the gold standard is always a tissue biopsy. Any difference in uh, tissue biopsy versus liquid biopsy results? Means data suggests that the liquid biopsy results are like this and tissue biopsy results are like this. Any comment on that? So I think uh, for the liquid biopsy versus, I, I, do, I don't know the data exact figures, but what I, what I know is that the liquid biopsy uh, versus the tissue biopsy, the concurrence is better in at least in the lung cancer. Yes. Setting, yeah. Chetan? Experience with it, but I don't remember any gross discrepancy between. Means uh, one of the uh, studies shows that slightly the response rate is much less with the liquid biopsy as compared to tissue biopsy results. Sometimes there is a there is a correlation of liquid biopsy versus tissue biopsy, but they mention about that slightly there is a difference. Tissue biopsy is giving a more result as compared to the liquid biopsy, but yes, if there is no option available. Liquid biopsy, as doctor mentioned, is an option in number of patients when there is a progression of disease. Liquid biopsy is negative and strongly suspect a particular suggestion for this to Yes, 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 yes. And also multiple fusion infusion, I'm not sure whether the cell blocks can be used for PDL1. Yes, yes. That's why I want to discuss about this. Means in liquid biopsy, doctor clearly mentioned about that PDL one is uh, is is really a problem. Means we have seen uh, both TKIs, and routinely we feel that peripheral edema is one of the commonest one. Liver enzymes, creatinine, nausea. What? What is your experience regarding these two groups of a drugs? Common side effect? Whether this is a manageable by the oncologist or need a hospital admission? to give a supportive care. Doctor. So peripheral edema and all uh, may not be um, requiring hospitalization, but uh, increased creatinine sometimes, uh, uh, there could be other factors as well playing for the increased creatinine, not just the drug. So uh, depending upon that, whether there's any UTI or any other um, dehydration or other uh, things, that needs to be sorted. That could be taken care in the in the hospital setting. And um, mostly, uh, I have a very limited experience using these agents. So, Doctor, anyone can comment about this? That patient need a OPD-based treatment? Or despite of a pills treatment, he was admitted in the hospital for side effect for nausea, vomiting, and peripheral edema and others. Uh, any house comments? Anybody has used this drug and having a clinical experience to manage the side effect of these TKIs for MAT as well as anti -care? Yes. Routinely there was no need for admission and you can manage on the OPD basis. So patient was started on capitinib 400mg BD through AXIS program in July 2020. 
patient suffered from grade one rash, grade one fatigue, grade two peripheral edema, and dose reduced to 300 milligram BD. Treatment continued for six months, and this is the CT scan picture. Shows the nodular swelling from 15.15 millimeter to decrease to 11 to 11 millimeters, and 20 to 15 millimeters this decrease to 14 is to 12 millimeter as per the MET inhibitors response. How would you have treated this patient if PDL1 more than 50% positive? Would you consider using immunochemotherapy agent in first line or metaxone 14? Skip please on a lung. Would you like to add any time PDL1? If MET positive, I discuss with you. In the upfront setting, uh I would prefer Capmatin only. Mm -hmm. that, that the, I mean, the, the outcomes are better with that drug. Yes. And even the registry data shows uh, immunotherapy outcomes are not that good in yes. this population. Yes. So in the later lines, when there are no other options, maybe we can think of immuno. But uh, first line, if Capmatin is accessible, we'll go for Capmatin or similar drugs. Yes. Dr. Chetan? Means if you see, you can easily see that retrospective analysis shows that chemotherapy as well as immunotherapy is not showing much response uh, rate, even the chrysotinib is not showing much response rate. I would like to say, in, and the guidelines as per the NCCN, uh, the latest one, the NTRK, uh, all the genes fusion positive. If fusion D is discovered prior to first line systemic chemo, the preferred one, as you discussed with me, the two drugs. Otherwise, is chemotherapy, as we discussed in a subset of patients. But I discussed with you regarding that if patient already started on chemotherapy, complete planned systemic chemotherapy, including maintenance therapy, or interrupt, followed by the PKI, you select yourself. These are the two one, is for NTRK, and this is for MAT, as per the guidelines says. Thank you very much for your kind attention and thank you very much for such a nice, wonderful discussion regarding the NTKR and MAC fusion genes in lung cancer. Thank you.